Hey y'all, it's Ab here with Real Michigan Anglers. Welcome to my guide to salmon fishing Michigan rivers, where, when, and how. In this video, I'm going to help you locate and catch more salmon through a better understanding of what a salmon is doing in the river. We're going to cover all sorts of stuff from the salmon life cycle to preferred temperatures to the effects of moon phase and rain on the fish's migrations and holding patterns as well as several other things. We're going to cover the life cycle of salmon as well as important information like what water temperatures they like, what kind of holding water they like, uh, the effects of rain, the effects of the moon phases, uh, and other general bits of information to help you catch more salmon. Alright, so, water temperatures is one of the most important aspects for knowing where and when a salmon is going to be. So, in order to understand this, we should start at the very beginning and understand the life cycle of a salmon and what they're doing. So, whether it's a stocked salmon or a natural reproducing salmon, salmon are in the river as juveniles, and as soon as they're big enough, they run to the Great Lakes, where they gorge and become huge over the course of four years, and then come back to the river to lay their eggs and then die. So, stocked fish are introduced into the river as little guys. These fish, as well as the native fish that are born from eggs in the river, all are going to want to come back to the place where they were born in order to repeat the cycle. So all salmon, whether they are stocked or natural reproducing, want to come back to their origin river the river they were born in, or the river they were stocked into. So, occasionally, they will not make it to that river for various reasons. Uh, it's like when you're in school and you got that one kid that's always just doing his own thing. That guy's going to go to some other river, maybe even in another state that's connected to the Great Lakes. Maybe even a different country. So, with the exception of a few rogue fish, pretty much all of the fish are going to go back to the river they were stocked in, or born in. So, an easy way for you to find more salmon is to look up the DNR's stocking reports in Michigan and see all of the places where salmon are stocked. This will give you the best idea of where the most salmon are going to be. Um, some rivers might have a few salmon stocked, some might have massive amounts stocked. The ones with massive amounts stocked aren't necessarily better than the ones with smaller amounts stocked. Um, and a lot of that has to do with fishing pressure and people knowing about these certain places. So, some of the most well-stocked rivers in Michigan for salmon are very well known and have lots of fishing pressure. So, I tend to have just about as much luck off the beaten path fishing some of these spots that people don't really know about. And I'm going to explain how to find all those spots. So, we've got the, the life cycle of the salmon. They go, they live in the lake, they get fat on food. After gorging in the lake, they come back to the river to lay eggs and then die. So, what makes the salmon come back? What triggers that? The main thing is water temperatures. So, when the Great Lakes water temperatures start shifting and cold water moves in closer to the shore, fish are going to move in with that cold water, usually because they're chasing bait fish, but also at this time, the salmon starts thinking, ooh, that river's calling my name. Like, I really need to go check that out. Uh, so they might stage near the mouth of the river in the Great Lakes for a period of time before going up. And the one thing that really will trigger them to move is water temperatures. So if the water temperatures hit just that right mark, they're going to start going. So what is that right mark? So in the Great Lakes, it is believed the king salmon prefer a range of 40 to 65 degree water, and cohos, similarly, like a range of 45 to 60. In most cases, the sweet spot is somewhere more in the middle of that range. So for king salmon, 42 to 48 is considered the sweet spot, and for cohos, 50 to 54 degrees is considered the sweet spot. So, 
60 to 65 being the high end of the range means when it's summer and it's hot outside and you're thinking about salmon and wondering when they're going to hit the river, the best thing you can do is see when the river that you were hoping to fish starts getting close to that 60 degree mark. When it gets close, be prepared, start planning trips, and just watch for that first temperature drop or the first major rain after it gets close, and that's when you can go get on those early salmon. So, other factors that play a major role in salmon migration are water levels and rain, as well as moon phases and time of day. So, let's talk about the effects of rain and water levels. So, for good salmon holding water to exist, the river can't be super shallow. When the river is super shallow, it's going to be warmer, it's going to be less oxygenated, it's just not ideal water for salmon and when those low water situations happen some salmon might just choose to skip that year and run the next year or um, they might run the river and just straight up die right away before they ever even get a chance to um, do their their business so I for one have seen this multiple times with cohos in my neck of the woods where they run really early because the conditions are good and then we get a hot spell Everything's dry, the water goes down, and these fish end up trapped in the river trying to survive the temperatures. So when this happens, you can find these fish in the deepest of holes or in well-oxygenated waters like discharges, creek mouths, and things like that. So in the really early season, those are very important factors. Moon phase is another thing that really has an effect on the movement of salmon. So, in my opinion, salmon move day or night and can travel the entire distance of a river in 24 to 48 hours if they are so inclined, but that's not really the case most of the time and really only certain conditions, I think, create that type of situation. So, for the average salmon, they tend to move at night under the cover of darkness, find a hole to hang out in, they hang out in that hole during the day, and then they move again at night. So, some fish might move a short distance upriver before hanging out and finding their spawning ground and then doing their thing. Others might go the entire length of the river as far as they can and then hang out near you know the last stop on that river and wait there until it's time to do their thing. Either way, they're more likely to move under the cover of darkness, but especially with the moon phases. So it is said that the best moon phases for salmon are the three or four days before a full moon or a new moon. So the couple days leading up to major lunar activities like full moons, new moons, can be times that salmon are going to be more encouraged to start pushing from the lake and up into the river and maybe some of the salmon that we're holding lower in the river move up and some of the ones that are in the lake kind of come up and take their place this shifting around of new fresh fish is is good for fishing so those are good times to fish also lunar activity has a lot to do with the way a fish feels as does barometric pressure and temperature so when you get these really finicky salmon and they're everywhere all around you and they won't bite anything and there's nothing you can do it's probably because they're upset about temperature conditions barometric pressure conditions etc if they're just not feeling good they're not going to be as active or as aggressive speaking of active and aggressive let's talk about the feeding habits of salmon so there's a lot of information uh, probably a lot of misinformation out there as well about the feeding habits of salmon. When salmon are in the Great Lakes, the best way to find them is to follow the bait migrations because they're out there gorging on food, fattening up, trying to become big and strong for their migration upriver, which literally takes all of their energy and kills them. So, they fatten up, they hit the river, and a lot of people believe once the salmon hits the river they do not feed anymore. I believe wholeheartedly that this is far from the actual truth, although there is a shred of truth to it. So, fresh fish, when they first move into the river, are definitely going to still have a snack. 
if an easy snack comes by, a nice minnow, whatever, some eggs floating down the river, some bugs, if it's in their face, they're going to eat it. They're going to want that extra energy. Their entire life has revolved around the concept of, I need to eat food, okay? Once they're running up the river, their mentality does change. They are no longer focused on fattening up and eating. They are now focused on reaching the spawning grounds and making babies. The longer they're in the river, the more this mental shift changes, and they shift from gorging mode to spawning mode. So when a king salmon is on a gravel bed spawning, that's when they're not really eating at all. That doesn't mean you can't catch them there. It doesn't mean that they won't hit your lure. It means that they're not really eating anymore. So, how is it that you can still catch them? Much like pike fishing, salmon are extremely aggressive and will attack things that invade their territory. If you have a salmon that's being territorial, either territorial of a spawning ground or territorial of its holding water, the hole that it's hanging out in, or just territorial in terms of like there's ladies around and I'm trying to show off and trying to protect them, etc. So these territorial fish will absolutely destroy a spinner or a crankbait. Um, that's why people catch them on lures. It's not snagging. You don't just happen to put a spinner right in between their mouth and catch them. They actively chase and attack things. Because they have no arms, when they attack things, it's with their mouth. So, yeah, it goes in their mouth, and you hook them. A lot of people have different opinions about that. I think if you're smart enough to fool a fish into hitting your bait, you're doing it. And you should be proud of that. So, aggression strikes are a very real thing. And like pike fishing, something that I like to do is throw really big, obnoxious things that have a lot of disturbance in the water, and really are just going to trigger that fish into just being super mad and smashing your lure. So that's one technique. Another, like I said before, these fresh fish are still feeding. So, things like flies and uh, eggs are totally a great option for salmon. Whether you're fly fishing, float fishing, bottom bouncing, whatever, they are going to hit these things, if they are presented well in front of them. Like I said, an easy snack is a hard thing to turn down, and especially with fresher fish. If the fish has only been in the river for a day or two and it's still chrome, you can bet yourself that it's going to eat some snacks. The fish that have been in the river longer, these fish are getting tired, they don't want to expend energy, they're not going to chase food, and at some point their body does stop digesting food altogether as it stops functioning, shuts down, eventually deteriorates, and they die. So, when you hear people talk about zombie salmon, that's why zombie salmon is a thing. The fish have become completely depleted of nutrients, they've used up all their energy moving up the river, and they savor that last little bit of energy to hopefully make babies with other salmon. So you don't have to rely on aggression strikes altogether, uh, and some of your nicest fish fresh chrome good fighting salmon might come on eggs or flies. So if you're new to salmon fishing and you just want to go out and get your first one, here is the biggest things to look for in a fishing spot. Look for deep water, mouths of creeks, well oxygenated air water like discharges. Salmon like to hold in deeper holes. So when you're fishing for salmon, especially on warmer days, target deep holes, preferably deep holes near well oxygenated cool water, shade, logs, these are all things that give a salmon a sense of security and those salmon are just kind of hanging out. So that's a good place to check. Uh, another really good place to check is dams because a salmon will run up a river and get to the last stop, a dam that it can't cross, and it's going to hang out there. Salmon very rarely turn around and run back down river. They might do that back and forth thing, uh, maybe even over the, you know, a half a mile to a mile or something, looking for the place they want to end up, the mate they want, or the gravel bed that they want. But for the most part, they're going to run up to dams and congregate there. Uh, if the dam has a fishing ladder, they're going to congregate there until they can find the ladder and move up. 
jack either way, you know, in position, etc. So, dams create holding spots for salmon and therefore are a great spot to go look for salmon. So dams create a holding spot for salmon that make them easier to target and that's a great spot to go find your first salmon. Another great spot would be creek mounts. So typically these small creeks that are tributaries to the main rivers that salmon run tend to run colder especially when they're spring fed creeks. So these cold water creeks or these well oxygenated creeks are going to attract salmon. So some salmon are going to be so attracted they're going to run right up those creeks and that's where you're going to find those salmon. Salmon can often be easier to find in some of these small creeks because you can literally see them um, or spook them as you're walking through, etc. But also they really like to hold at mouths of creeks. This well oxygenated cold water that comes out especially in the heat of you know late summer early fall is going to be very attractive to them they may even hold there until the conditions become ideal for them to move elsewhere so that's a good place to look as well later in the season a good spot to hang out for a salmon is going to be on gravel ethically a lot of people don't agree with gravel fishing for salmon I personally don't really do it just because it's not all that sporting. I do sight fish for salmon in terms of I will look for visual clues of salmon and fish the area that I know have salmon by looking for those visual clues, but I don't sight fish for salmon in the terms of, oh, there's a salmon, cast at it, okay? So when I talk about sight fishing for salmon, if you go walk a river that you think should have salmon in it and you just start walking, you're going to see them jump. You're going to see them hit the water. You're going to see movement along the edges, all sorts of things. Salmon give themselves away more than any other fish, in my opinion. Um, that makes them pretty easy to locate and sight fish for. So, you go out, you start walking the river. Oh, one just jumped there. Okay, stop there. Cast your lures. Drift your bobbers, etc. Do your thing. Where there's one, there's often more. Especially if you saw a female jump, she's going to be calling in all the males with her scent, etc. So, that's a good way to sight fish for salmon. Um, late in the season, they're going to be near and around gravel. This is a good time to fish the holes right behind the gravel. Then, newer fish that are coming in uh, will be in there. Also, fish that munch on salmon eggs will be in those deeper holes. So, there may be salmon on the gravel right here and then a nice little hole right here well instead of raking those salmon off there fish the hole you might catch yourself a really big brown trout you might catch yourself a steelhead you might catch yourself another salmon uh, all these other fish like to hide in these holes and just chill and eat the eggs that drop back so those are some good things to look for when you're just looking for salmon water also Knowing which rivers hold salmon and which rivers do not is very helpful. Uh, not only which rivers do and don't, but which sections of rivers do and don't. Um, so, certain rivers that are really famous for salmon have a limited run of where the salmon can go, uh, and eventually there might be a dam with no ladder and they can't go any farther, so if you're fishing up from the dam, you're not going to find them even though you're on the right river. So, do your research on that sort of thing. And um, another really easy way to find potential salmon waters would be to check out the Trout Routes app. On the Trout Routes app, it shows you all of the waters in your state that hold trout. Trout water is very similar to salmon water, not identical, but I find that almost every river I've fished that has trout also gets salmon and steelhead. So. If you check out the Trout Routes app, just look at your state and look at the map that shows all the waters that have trout, and do some investigations. Start with the ones closest to you, and then check out the other ones that are a reasonable drive. Make yourself a list of potential places to try, then do some more research on those places, maybe ask some other fishermen for advice, uh, that kind of thing. I'm not going to name any rivers in this video. So, we've talked a lot about finding salmon. 
but we haven't talked a lot about catching salmon. I did mention float fishing with eggs, uh, flies, tossing spinners, crankbaits. These are all kind of the main techniques that most people use. Um, I've becoming more and more a fan of float fishing for them myself. Um, spent a lot of time bottom bouncing for them, casting hardware for them. I've caught them on crankbaits, I've caught them on spinners, I've caught them on skeins, bond bags, flies, etc. So, you have options. Figure out what works for you. Uh, figure out what works for the river that you're fishing. Figure out what works for the time of year. You know, you might not have luck on the same thing in early fall as you do in late fall. And naturally, that makes absolute sense because the salmon's whole mentality and everything changes, and as they get closer to spawning, they're closer to death and all of that. So, if you're not sure what lures to use, I highly recommend you check out my video uh, called My Favorite Salmon Lures. I'm going to put the uh, link up here. You can click that, check that video out. That will really help you get started on knowing kind of what should I buy what should I try, that kind of thing, what some of the typical options are, and certainly the things that have worked best for me over the years. Um, so check that out. So if all of this is kind of overwhelming, you're not really sure about, you know, how do you find the water temperatures in rivers across Michigan, etc., uh, a good general rule of when salmon fishing starts in the rivers is Labor Day. Labor Day, there's usually salmon in the river. Uh, oftentimes, they've already been there for a while, and you're a little bit late to the show on Labor Day. Other times, you know, there might be a straggler, or nobody's quite seen any yet, but, like, they should be there any day. Uh, the reason you can't put a date on it is because it has more to do with water levels and temperatures and all of these things. So, Labor Day is a good time to start really thinking about salmon fishing, though. And salmon fishing goes all the way through uh, the end of October and beyond. Uh, some rivers in Michigan can actually hold salmon the whole year round. I have caught salmon in January and February, which you would think is like not really a thing, because they usually are dead by the end of fall. But some run later than others. Uh, they all have a mind of their own. They all have their own preferences. Uh, so if you're hardcore about salmon, don't stop fishing them until February, you know? You just gotta really know which rivers are going to support them at that time of year, and that will uh, allow you to actually be able to go target some salmon in the river. Uh, generally speaking, most salmon are uh, really tapering down and getting kind of nasty by October. So if you're out there for table fare, you know, the cutoff is October, in my opinion. Doesn't mean you can't catch a fresh fish in October, you know, but most of them are not going to be fresh. Uh, the one that I caught in February was absolutely chrome. So, it can happen, um, but, you know, once October hits, I'm salmon fishing purely for the fun of it, and really at that point I'm more thinking steelhead with the accidental salmon catch thrown in. Uh, because a lot of the holding water and techniques and lures and bait choices and stuff for steelhead fishing is quite similar, if not the same, as salmon fishing. Uh, so, you can get into some mixed bag salmon and steelhead days as fall gets later and later. And then, you have to wait all the way through spring and summer to get a chance to do it again. Unless you go out on the big lake and go trolling or jigging for salmon. Alright, I didn't include any information about Atlantic salmon, pink salmon, etc. I know nothing about those fish. I've never caught them. If you want to help me catch my first one, please, by all means, tell me your, your secret spots. Take me out. Recommend a guide that slays them. I'd be happy. Uh, I would love to get into some of that action. But the majority of Michigan salmon fishing is really king salmon and coho salmon and that's what this video is all about so i hope that all of this information was really helpful um remember the number one thing that's going to catch you salmon is time spent on the river uh, i give guitar lessons for a living and this is the same spiel i give my students if you pick up a guitar and play it every day you're going to get good 
you're going to move past your inabilities, you're going to figure out tricks and things that help you be better. So every time you go out on the river, even if you fail miserably, you've learned lessons. So you learned either that was the wrong time of the year, I was tossing the wrong lures, uh, that was not the right river. You know, these are all important lessons to learn, and the reason I know the things that I know is because I've gone out and failed over and over and over for many years. All of those failures eventually led to my first salmon, my second salmon, my third salmon, my best salmon season. Last year I got uh, 16 cohos in one day. That was my best day of coho fishing. Um, I'm learning. I'm expanding. I am growing as a fisherman every time I hit the water. And for all of you who think I'm like a crazy good fisherman, I literally just go fishing more than you do. And that's why I catch what I catch. Um, I try to fish, you know, three to five days a week when I can. It's been not like that at all lately. It's been more like one or two days a week tops. Um, but I'm out there. I'm working it. I'm leaving my house at 2 a.m. to drive up north to hit prime waters at sunlight. Uh, that kind of thing. Which reminds me, the one thing I didn't talk about was uh, sunlight. We talked about moon phases, uh, but best time of day to fish for salmon would be first light, in my opinion. Uh, the first three hours of the day, from when the sun starts peaking over the horizons to when things start getting a little warmer and fish are really more settling in, that's a really good time to hit the fish. So if you can wake up super early and be on the river for first light, that's going to make a big difference for you, especially when you're trying to catch that first salmon, because those first light bites are the easier bites of the entire day to get. Conversely, last light can be very good as well. Uh, really the last hour or two of light into the first hour or two of darkness can be absolutely incredible for king salmon. Uh, as the light goes down, their confidence level comes out, and they become more active, uh, more aggressive, they're moving more, so maybe you were sitting on a hole that didn't have any fish the last couple hours of the day, and then it gets dark and fish start moving in, and bam, there's tons of new fresh fish in your hole that just moved from lower in the river. So, first light, last light, excellent great times to get a salmon bite. Thanks for watching guys, appreciate it, catch you later in another video. Uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button, leave me a comment. All that stuff is all very helpful to me. Uh, I enjoy helping you guys out, so please help me out as well. The more I grow this, the more time I can devote to it, and the better content I can create for you guys. So, thanks a lot for watching. Catch you later.